Alex, a little faster. Can you drive faster, please? Okay, I'm going as fast as I can, Ayush. It's Bombay. You know, it's kind of ironic because we're actually on our way to interview an F1 legend, Mika Hakkinen, who perhaps is known for his, well, belting speeds on the racetrack. But my colleague, Alex Matthew, clearly <laughs> is no flying fin. So, two points here. Mm -hmm. We're driving in Bombay. Yes. And second point is, I'm Alex Matthew and I'm definitely no match for the flying fin. Okay, so let's actually get some lessons from the flying fin. Yeah. Let's in the it. meanwhile, I'm going to go Step on as it. fast as I can. Step on it. Alex, it's a nice sunny afternoon here in Mumbai. Do you want to go out for a drive? I would love to. What is the safest way to go out for a drive right now? Well, I can think of many safe ways. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, you know, I have my car. But I would much rather go out for a drive with the person who's standing with me. Because if you're driving, none of us are getting into the car. <laughs> we have the world's best, Mika Hakkinen. Yes. Legend, two-time F1 champion. Mika, thanks for joining us on Bloomberg. Thank Quint. you so much. Thank you. Very nice to us. meet you. It's great to be a Facebook Live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and at, uh, Actually, all over, Mika. We're going to put this out across everywhere. Across medium. Wherever oh. we can reach out to all your fans. That's brilliant. And F1 fans. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mika, this is your first trip where you've made it past the airport. Uh, in, in Mumbai, <laughs> you've actually gotten out into the lovely, humid weather of Mumbai. How's it? How's it been? It's been amazing, I tell you. Uh, now it's weekend, so there's not so much traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when I arrived here on Friday, it was amazing. I mean, it was just packed everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Every car is so close. It's like it's like a racetrack. <laughs> so, <laughs> so maybe if they ever bring F1 back here to India, then maybe we have a Monaco Grand Prix version here in Mumbai, right? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That would no. be good. No. Yeah, that so, would be good. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a nice chat with Mika, of course. We're going to get uh, well, all our fan questions answered as well. Get a lot of his experiences documented as well. And then there's a special surprise in the second half of the show, isn't there, Alex? Yes, absolutely. But I want to start by asking Mika the obvious question. You know, a lot of accounts of how you started your journey as a racer. And it started at the age of five. Wow, that's exactly. That's a long time ago. and, and uh, uh, it started a really strange way. Uh, very first time when I sat in a racing car, in a go-kart when I was five years old. Very first corner, right. I had an accident. What? I went with the go-kart upside down, <laughs> and my parents were running like, oh my God, oh little son. <laughs> and and uh, Were you wearing a helmet? Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, I came out of there, and I was like, oh, I'm fine. But what happened there in the very first time, right. I understood. Know your limits. Hmm. This mm -hmm. is a dangerous sport. So every time when you go around the corner, don't be too greedy. Leave the little cap. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Go maximum attack, flat out, of course. Hmm. But don't take risks mm -hmm. unless they are calculated. Hmm. Amiga, since we started, uh, with a question about you starting off at the age of five. And I'm guessing I've heard in Finland people start very early. Car yeah. control, cruise control, these are things that you guys just start off with. That's correct. So, but what I also read somewhere was that, well, everyone talks about the Mika Hakkinen uh, and Schumacher rivalry, but one of your earliest rivals was actually a girl when you were when you were five years old. That is correct. It was quite a, it was quite a challenge. Was this on the same what, day of the first crash? What's the story about? I don't know. No. No, th th this <laughs> came later. This came later. I think I was about 11, 12 years old, okay. Okay. super talented girl, mm -hmm. racing so fantastic lines and driving beautifully. Uh, and she was kicking my butt. <laughs> you know, she was winning. And I was very happy about that, you know, how, you know. Uh, but uh, then when we got older, uh, she decided to go in motorbike racing. Mm. Whoa. So, uh, and I think she had a couple of accidents. Mm. So then she decided to. Keep that aside. To stop. Right. Uh, so I wish she would have continued with the car racing because it was absolutely fantastic. But so the story that your story mm. is essentially progressively going from that decision that you made as a five-year-old kid that you wanted to drive. Absolutely. And then you went on go-karting for a little while, right? Oh yeah, I did. I oh, did. And when was the first launch that you really took? Not before F1, of course. Um, when you bought your Ford. Uh, it was, I think, year. Yeah, I think it was around 87 or mm. 88. Right. Mm. I think when I got the uh, agreement with a great company from England uh, mm. and, and to start to be a 
what I would call it, professional racing driver. Mm. Then I got really confident. I said, that's it. I'm going to go for it, you know? Yeah. So it was not anymore a hobby. Right? Mm. It became a serious job. Mm. And, and uh, So is that something you worked on from the beginning or is it? When you're a kid, you don't know. Mm. It's just for fun. Mm. It's a, it's, you live with the dreams. Uh, you're having fun. Uh, and I'm very glad uh, this dream, this fun, become my work. Mm. Right. And it was, a, it was a great, great pleasure. But you know, Mika, often your fans, uh, F1 fans, often say that Mika retired too early. Yeah. When you yeah. look back, now in hindsight, do you, do you think that it was a little too early or was it good timing? I, I felt it was a good timing. It was very important, you know. Uh, I was 33 years old, roughly. Right. And I have won the World Championship twice. Mm. Uh, I had a bad accident in '95, right. so I didn't want to push my luck further. Mm. I thought that's it. You know, don't be too greedy. Mm. Now it's time to move other things in your life. Mm. Formula One is a great sport, but it's not the center of the universe. Mm. Right. That's surprising coming from you of all people, <laughs> but '95 you had that bad accident, but you yeah. came back to win two world yeah, championships what was that like? after that. Ah, it was really tough. Mm. Uh, how I was able to come back, it was just because I had a great support from the family, mm. great support from the uh, management team, great support from the team McLaren. Right. You know that was the only way how I was able to come back. Right. Mm. Normally, if the people had a bad luck or something, people go. They run away. It's traumatizing. Mm. No, that's the time when you need people, mm. you know. And I was very lucky. I had a great. I was very fortunate that I had a good people around me. Mm. Uh, so we're going in a car, guys. Sure, we should. Uh, yes. This is this is where I ask you something that I always <laughs> wanted to. In uh, I think it's a little bit of Finnish. We can teach you a little bit of Hindi, and you can teach us a little bit of Finnish. It's Sisu. That's what you need, right? That's that is correct. What's Sisu? Sisu? I'm missing something here. So it's fine. You know, okay. Mika, we have these in Sisu. Alex doesn't even get Hindi. Me. So we can do some finish today. We need <laughs> some... Uh, should we tell him at the end of the show, Mika? Let's do that. Yeah. You need some Sisu to get We need to teach him Hindi though. We will. So. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> go, let's go. Let's go, guys. All right. Okay. All set? Yes. Off we go. Yes. Seat belts on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mika, is this your first uh, instance driving here in Mumbai? No, oh, actually I've done it a bit before. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, you just like the front, the lead car? Yeah. But like I said earlier, it, it's fantastic that way. It's a weekend. Not yeah, so much traffic. Yeah, Otherwise yes, it's... Uh, <laughs> you, you have to but be... But it's a right-hand drive, right? That's, that's different. Yeah, in Europe, bit, everything's on the left. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. Uh, it's a bit tricky. I was struggling, Mika. I was in Europe a few months ago and I was driving uh, all over Portugal and I found it so difficult yeah. on, on the left and stick. <laughs> and that's the other thing also, you know, like a Formula One. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but now you don't have any more gear stick in uh, Formula One. You have everything yeah. here. So I but think in the first place it could be a... But that's, well. that's another thing I wanted to ask you, Mika. Is it the, the way the sport has changed, right? Everyone's changed over the years uh, with technologies coming in, a lot of different rules coming in, perhaps, uh, you know, uh, many regulations coming in. Do you think it's it's for the better or worse? Well, there have to be regulations. Right. Uh, there have to be rules. Uh, technolo technology has to go forward. It, right. it never going to stop. What kind of rules, regulations, what kind of technology uh, coming is, of course, is a very important factor. Mm -hmm. What are the right ones? What are the wrong ones? It's difficult always to say. But the fact is, rules are safe for everybody. So you have to find the best way to, to uh, make your car better than others. Mm. And the rules are very interesting because uh, engineers, they love to find the way how, not to break the rules, but how to... How to uh, Bend them. Yeah, that's the right word. That's <laughs> the right word. 
Oh, the weather coming now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Mika Hakkinen yeah. driving, guys. Come on. <laughs> Mika Hakkinen driving. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. But, you know, so a lot of, <clears throat> lot of talk has gone behind the change in the engines that took place in F1. Mm-hmm. You know, moving from the V8s to the V12s. What do you think about that? Less power, right? But, you know, less excitement also. Yeah. The <clears throat> I think the it's logical. Uh, that's what the Formula One is doing. Uh, we have to find a new way of finding energies. Right. We're just gonna burn the fuel, massive amount, and and that's how we found the power. Mm. You know, we have to find other ways, and and the way the Formula One is today, that's the technology going that direction. Uh, and you have to make compromises. You have to make sacrifices. Sometimes you have to get a couple of steps back before you can go for and forward. Mm. Uh, but exactly what I tried to say here is just we have to find a way how we can save save the uh, energies in the right way. Mm-hmm. There's a new uh, electronic circuit, right? Electric circuit. The F, uh, the uh, Formula Electric has Formula E. Yeah, Formula E. Yeah. What do you think about that? Personally, I think it's brilliant. Okay. Uh, and I think that's going to be very, very powerful uh, uh, sport uh, and motor racing sport in next couple of years. I think it's brilliant already now, but it's going to be even better in the future when, again, the companies will find a way to develop the batteries mm. in a level that way they can they can find uh, power uh, to, to, to run the electric engines to two, three hours with the full power. Mm. At the moment, they can run very short time. Uh, they have to change the car during a race uh, and the batteries kind of generate a lot of power. So it's a bit, it's a bit early, but uh, it will be, it will be good. Oh, there we go. So there we go. That, that, that's, that's why I call the flying fin, isn't it? <laughs> I finally understood that by, by practice. Very few people in the world could say, Yes, I know why Mika Hagen's got the flying pin, because there wasn't a two-seater F1 car. No, but, but also, Mika, you know, when, when we talk about your F1 rivalries, and the one that's always spoken about is the Schumacher Hagen one. Based on, um, on your experience um, and in your time in F1, what would you say is, is a rivalry that you look back on saying, hey, this, this was the day when I felt like I was challenged? Oh, it happened many times. <laughs> <laughs> it happened many times. They were, I had a great teammates in my career in, in Formula One. Right. Unbelievable talents. Arto Senna, Nigel Mansell, Marty Brundle, David Coulthard, Johnny Herbert, Marty Brundle, uh, Blundell. Uh, fantastic drivers. Alan Prost was one point. Hmm. Uh, so I've been, been challenged so many times. But from all of them, I learned. I learned something. But I would say Michael Schumacher was the most hardest uh, challenge. Mm-hmm. He, I think he, was, he thought he so as well. Very tough. He did. He said, well, he, he, did, he did go on record saying that uh, Mika Hakkinen was perhaps the driver he feared the most, or the only driver he yeah. really feared. Because he was very tough, yeah. He was always competitive. Those, those last minute finishes, it was, so, it was very unpredictable, I think. So now you understand why I've retired so early. <laughs> but, <laughs> also, I want to ask you uh, one more thing, Mika. When it comes to F1 today, and seeing what Wettel has done over the years, or, or Lewis Hamilton, and what he's doing now, uh, do you think that well, the rivalry still exists, but but the sport has changed um, in a way that well, in a healthy way, perhaps? It, it has changed a lot, and I, I think why Formula One has changed quite a lot because of social media. Mm. Uh, and I don't say it's a negative thing. Uh, social media is a fantastic tool, uh, but it needs the content, it needs the fans to really to hear what drivers has to say. Just not enough to take a picture and say, hey, look, I'm looking good. <laughs> no, that's, not the, that's not the point. The point is to give the fans a message, give them an education, give them a story, tell your experiences. Uh, and, and that's, my opinion, is a very important part. Talk to parents of the kids, 
that way, hey, this this what I believe is the right thing. Eat healthy, do sports. But if I say eat healthy, people who never had a healthy food, they don't even know what it means. Mm. So you have to put the content, tell them a story. So a lot of time I think what the fans are reading, the racing drivers, social media, they 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 think, okay, fine. But there is no story. Mm. Mm. Like we are chatting here, we're talking about why this and why that. And right. So I enjoy enormously. Yeah. But we do as well. <laughs> but social media have to change. We've spoken to a few other sports personalities, legends in their own regard. But you know, the one, the one common thing is that they, they look at their time in their sport and they said, say that perhaps the golden years are over. You know, the only difference is football where you see so much physicality and speed. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the current stock is uh, or the competition therein is as, you know, crazy as it used to be at your time? My opinion, yes. It, it's still a massive competition out there. Tougher than ever. Uh, because there is so much information available. So the level of the sports people, they can become very smart. And they are very high level. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is some talents which are jumping out from, from the basic sports people. Uh, but I think it's, it's still a mega, mega, mega uh, challenge. But, like coming back to earlier what we discussed, to be number one and to be even better, you need to be best in everything. It's not enough that way you're talented, it's not enough you're good, it's not enough that way you have good muscles to race or do any other sport. You need to fulfill all the boxes to be number one. And social media is one of them. Mika, one question that always comes on social media for you is everyone um, well, seems to be very concerned about whether F1's coming back to India or not. From the time that it was here and from what from you witnessed, do you think it's something that perhaps two, two things when it comes to the India angle, being young talent from India perhaps uh, joining F1 and two, F1 coming back, a circuit in India. Is that a possibility, you think? Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm very confident uh, Formula 1 come back to India. Mm -hmm. What about the, the country driver? has a, such a beautiful potential for many, many different businesses. We have great fans here in India. Uh, I, I think it's coming back. Is there going to be a racing trial from India? There has been in the yes. past. Yes. Uh, and and uh, it will happen sooner or later. Okay, Mika. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank we, you. Have, we have proven that Alex has enough sisu <laughs> for this. Oh yes, he has. It, actually. It's, all of, it's all about the courage. It's you have the courage, courage to sit with the flying fin. Thank you so much, Mika, for speaking with us. It's been an absolute it's been pleasure. An absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers. You're good team. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks so much. Whoa. Are you, <laughs> now Are you okay? Mika Hakkinen. You want to pinch yourself? Well, I pinched myself five times inside the car. Boss, that was mind-boggling. Yeah. And, uh, well, I don't know. I, Ayush, I can't remember what I was doing when I was five years old. I, Mika, Mika rode his, drove his first go-kart at five. Drove his first go-kart at five? You're talking about not remembering what you were doing. I clearly don't remember what I was doing at five years old. Maybe it's in some, you know, weird recesses of my mind. Funny than that is, I don't even, I can't really remember my first heartbreak. Maybe it was a long time ago. He remembers something even more special because when we spoke to him about the Schumacher yeah. rivalry, were you a little scared asking him that question? I was kind of scared. I just put it out there. No, consider the current scenario, right? There's, you don't really know what's happening with Schumacher. And, yeah. you know, you, you've heard about a lot of rivals that are actually close. Both legends in their own right. And I've seen a lot of footage of them having, you know, some nice banter, some great chats. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, they're all professional. But the rivalry, and he said it, the media and social media makes all of this as big as it is. But the rivalry aside, he, he I told you, he had another rival. The rival was when he was 11 or 12 years old. And what's interesting is that he said that he wished that she was still driving. Or she. That she that, yeah, and that she was driving Formula 1 because she was so good. Imagine someone who's better than Mika at that age, right? You know, they used to do this in our school as well when we were younger. Uh, when, it was a boys' school and when you didn't play well, well, they used to yeah. make you play on the girls' team in yeah. the neighbouring school. What was worse was a lot of those girls were better than yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. I remember that happened but, in my school with hockey. But, but we've, <laughs> never, we've never made it 
in life to ever remember these things until now at least. Uh, no, the well, Mika Hakkinen saying it is a big deal. And the other thing that I clearly will will never forget is the fact that he was itching to cut loose. You know, there were a few instances that he just <laughs> yeah, he just rev the engine and I you think, felt that. And that's that's when I was holding the <laughs> the side rail because at the end of it you think, hey man, your seat belt's on, you're in, with, but he is the flying fin. Yeah. And that's when you remembered, yeah, this is the guy Schumacher said he was You simply had scared. to do Sisu and all, and I didn't know what... So Sisu, <laughs> I'll tell you the story, guys, uh, behind Sisu, is um, I saw, you know, a couple of interviews and I had a few friends who talk about this. And I think, I don't know whether it's, this is a real meaning, even I'm winging it, <laughs> but I think it's all about courage. Yeah. And it's about the courage to do something crazy, is what I understand, what I gather from contextual references. Mm. So I thought, let's bring one up on you in, in the end out there. But, but clearly you did, clearly I did. Um, it was a short circuit. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could have gone in for a longer drive. But he did speak about motorsport in India as well. And I think uh, that's something... He said there's a possibility that it'll... He thinks it, there's a distinct possibility that the boot circuit will get used again. Yeah, you know, in terms of... Well, we, he did say we have had uh, names involved in F1 in the past. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't know. For boot circuit or not. I, I like tracking that joke with him also on Monaco Grand Prix and he said Mumbai traffic. Yeah. He said, so he mentioned it even after the interview and before he said, and during, he said, I'm glad that you guys brought me here uh, on a weekend. And that's why it's the weekend show because uh, he saw, he, he's, he's heard about the, the traffic. And uh, he's experienced a part of it when he got here. In, a, in an earlier weekend, interview, yeah. which was actually on the Quint, which was just him talking to camera. Well, he also said that he was, uh, something I want to ask him, but you know, damn, I forgot about it. Yeah. Was he actually said that he loves chicken tikka masala. For all of you guys <laughs> who like, well, well, Mika Hakkinen loves chicken tikka masala, but he was a little scared of it being mega spicy in India. Because he says the ones that he has in, in, in Europe, because yeah. he settled in Monaco, he says a lot of Indian restaurants, but he likes it out there. He's a little worried about how spicy it'll be. We should have asked him that as well. Mm. Maybe the next time we meet him. But it's interesting that you get chicken tikka masala in Monaco. Everywhere. Oh, you get yeah, it everywhere. I love it. You get butter chicken, chicken tikka masala <laughs> everywhere. And guys, thanks so much for tuning in. This yeah. is just us. This is how we look when <laughs> we are zapped, when yeah. we are completely, well, bedazzled. bedazzled by a sporting legend. And we're glad we could have a chat and share it with you. Let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.